The cost of getting a PhD in the US ranges from $28,000 to about $55,000 annually, depending on your program, specialization, and the university. That's a lot of money to pay for about four to six years. In this video, I'll be sharing a step-by-step -step guide on how you can get into a fully funded PhD program in the US as an international student. These were the strategies I used to get two fully funded offers and one of them actually had an acceptance rate of 6%. If you're new to this channel, welcome. It's Zubi here and I'm a PhD student here in the US. The videos on this channel are to help ease your transition into the US and also make the best of your stay here. If you're interested in that, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you very much. So first up, your application packet. This comprises of your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, your academic CV, your SOP, your personal statement or motivational letter, your first scores like GRE, TOEFL, IELTS and the likes, recommendation letter, publications and certifications. So for each of them, this is what I applied with. First up, I'm not sharing these things to brag, but to be transparent with you and I hope it inspires you on your application journey. For my bachelor's degree, I had a 4.65 over 5.0 in mathematics from UNN. For my master's, I had a 3.88 over 4.0. This was at the time of applying, which was after three semesters at Bollingry State University. Then for my academic CV, I developed mine from a template shared by Dr. Olumuiwa on Twitter. I'll link it in the description below. Then for the statement of purpose and motivational letter, I just showed great interest in the school and the program as well. Then for my test scores, first up my TOEFL, it expired in 2019 because I wrote it in 2017 and I didn't use it in this application process. Then my GRE, which I got a 308 in, which also is currently expired, it expired May this year because I also wrote it in 2017 as well. Now for the recommendation letter, I had three professors from the university where I did my master's who personally taught me and I also worked with them as graduate assistants. Now finally, for the publications and certifications, I had none at the time of applying. So what I would like you to do is to step back from your application packet and take a look at it to weigh if it's strong enough and then if it's not, what can you do to strengthen it? The suggestion I'll give is to write the IELTS or TOEFL. Now, there's something that people say about, oh, I learned in English and I don't think I, I should write the TOEFL or IELTS and all of that. The school waves it, so I won't write. I would want to advise that if your application packet is not strong enough, you should write the English test. Why? Because it's one of the things they look out for when they want to award scholarships. You know, these tests are the same standard all around the world. And so if you do well in it, it puts you as a strong academic student. When you've made plans towards getting the best academic packet you possibly can, then you can make a school choice. So based on the course you want to do, drop a list of 6 to 8 schools that you feel would be best for your packet. You can actually make it up to 10 schools, I have a video on application fee waivers which will come out later this week. So subscribe and be on the lookout for that. I've done an in-depth video on how to choose schools, the link should come out here. Not to go into so much details, but some things you should look out for are the reputation of the school, the acceptance rates, and the program content. I made a decision to get a PhD this early on the 4th of December 2021. Initially, I wanted to start in 2023, and there's a whole big story to that, which I'll probably leave for a different video. So since I decided in December, that was really late, and my options were few. You know, the application window usually opens in August, and the first batch of schools end their application deadline in December 15th. Some others extend it to December 31st, while some to January, but last like February 1st. So I applied to five schools for my PhD, Kennesaw State University, Bowling Green State University, University of Buffalo at New York, Stevens Institute of Technology, and then a combined program between Clemson University and the Medical University of South Carolina. Although I had a list of 20 universities, I chose these five schools because of their reputation, the research areas of the professors, funding, avoid schools without funding, application deadline, and their location. Another very important thing you need to do is to smash the like button. So please, if this video has been helpful to you, please give this video a like so the algorithm will promote it to more people. Thank you very much. So after selecting schools, the next thing you should do is to build connections. This is what I'll call the secret, if there's anything like that, because it increases your chances of getting admission and funding tremendously. 
The easiest way to build connection is to email the GoI coordinator. They are usually very instrumental in the admission decision process and then they are supposed to be responding to students. So usually the kind of emails I'll send them will be of my application packet and to ask them if I'm a good fit and then they will tell me, okay, yes, you are, apply. Or some will say, no, you are not. And that just helps you not to waste your time or waste your money because no matter how much you apply to that school, you most likely won't get admitted. So let's jump on my screen to see a sample email that will send to a grad coordinator. So this is a sample you can work with. A good subject to the email will be prospective grad student inquiry. So dear Professor Zubi, I write to express my interest and to know if I'm a good fit for the PhD in Geospatial Sciences program at Yale University. I'm currently a master's degree student of Geospatial Sciences at Harvard University. I've completed three semesters and will be graduating by fall 2023. I am currently on a CGPA of 3.7. My bachelor's degree was in geology at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. I graduated with a GPA of 4.4. These degrees and thesis experience in them have reinforced my resolve to stay associated with academics and increased my interest in the teaching profession in which I dream of becoming a professor of geology in in the near future. Oh, that's a mouthful. To fulfill my aspirations and dreams of becoming a professor of geology, I deem it necessary to apply as a doctoral student in your program. I read some of the course requirements and I find them interesting. I'm enclosing my curriculum vitae and transcript for my master's and bachelor's degrees. Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours sincerely, then your name. I'll share links to this in the description below. You should duplicate the document and then tweak it to your unique story. If your guide coordinator says you should apply, then you're ready to start the application process. The application process differs for different universities, but I'll be sharing my experience applying to KSU where I currently am because it was the most stressful application I've ever done. So first of all, submitting my application documents for my bachelor's degree, the school required that I evaluated all non-US transcripts and I did my bachelor's in Nigeria. So I had to get the transcript evaluated. For my master's degree, I had to request my school to send an official transcript to them. Then for my academic CV and my statement of purpose, I uploaded the document online. Then for my GRE, I had to request ETS to send an official copy to the school. For my TOEFL, it was waived because I did a master's in the US. For the recommendation letter, I filled in the details of the three professors I mentioned earlier when I was applying online. And finally, for the application fee, I paid $60 because it was non-waivable. Then number two, I emailed the grad coordinator that I had submitted all my application documents. So I contacted before and then after. Then number three, interview. I had a 15 minute interview for this PhD, Kennesaw State University, as well as the other one I got funding for, the Clemson University and MUSC combined program. And then I was in New York at that time, renewing my international passports. I'll do separate videos on PhD interviews and renewing international passports later, so watch out for that. Then finally, I had to wait for the decision. So this was my timeline. On January 22nd, I submitted the application. On 30th of March, I had the interview. Then on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, I got my admission. So when we were sending Happy New Month and April Fool's, I received congratulations, you've been admitted, and I was so, so happy that day because I waited. April 1st is a long time to wait for an admission. Your application will be reviewed by Americans and you need to understand their culture to submit an application that will be compelling. So watch this video next to learn more about their culture. Thank you so much for watching and then I'll see you over there. Bye. And so being that I had, so being that I decided, so being that, <laughs>